people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. A two-decade protracted Afghanistan war is officially over with all mandated U.S. troops gone. And while the U.S. President Joe Biden has defended his decision as best available option in the interest of his country, a humanitarian crisis is appearing imminent in Kabul. With currency plunging, markets shut and services halted due to a constant atmosphere of fear, an upside downturn of events has put everybody in a spot of bother. Last night in Kabul, the United States ended 20 years of war in Afghanistan, the longest war in American history. While talking about the conclusion of a chaotic evacuation from Afghanistan that also became a cause of killings of several locals and Americans, the U.S. President Joe Biden said that Washington couldn't have done anything different or better. He has in fact referred to it as a success, citing evacuation of more than 123,000 people from Kabul since 14th August when the Taliban swept over the country. And while Biden has assured that remaining 100 to 200 US troops will be safely brought back without any deadlines. He has maintained a conspicuous silence over securing the lives of those who worked for the U.S. against the Taliban and now fear deadly reprisal attacks. By the time I came to office, the Taliban was in its strongest military position since 2001 controlling or contesting nearly half of the country. The previous administration's agreement said that if we stuck to the May 1st deadline that they had signed on to leave by, the Taliban wouldn't attack any American forces. But if we stayed, all bets were off. Entire world barring a few, is apprehensive about recognizing the Taliban as a legitimate entity. While the European Union has said that it is in no hurry to recognize the Taliban, the United Nations, under the Indian chair last week, urged the Taliban to stick to its commitments and allow safe passage to anybody who looked for it. Currently, the Taliban control more territory than when they last ruled from 1996 to 2001 before U.S.-led forces ousted them in 2001. The Taliban are now also equipped with more sophisticated weaponry, including armored vehicles and attack helicopters. Although the Taliban has been projecting itself as a moderate version of its previous regime, the people and observers are not buying the argument. There are also reports that reprisal attacks and attacks on minority Hazaras have already begun, compelling thousands to flee the country. The Taliban say they are ready to run the government. However, it appears highly unlikely that people with no real education and experience can tread through the challenge. Afghanistan's economic situation, too, is in dire straits, with its currency plunging by almost 20 units against US dollar in the past three weeks. Most of Afghans live under $2 per day, and they blame the change in regime for their worsening lives. <laughs> Most of the 
خرید به یاد بعد اندازهش داریم اتا فروش هیچ نداریم دمی چند وقت هم که اکمک روزگارا خوب شد، خوبتر شده رفت وقتی که امتیوری که در میدان اوائی شد خب بیخی کارو بار سقود داد به این خاطر با مردم از وضعیت فیلی ناهنجور است به میده هاست وضعیت مالی بازار هم خوب نیست Many offices and shops are still shut and salaries have been unpaid for weeks, meaning even the relatively well-off are struggling to put food on the table. Experts say a humanitarian crisis looms over Afghanistan which cannot be prevented with little generosity by its potential allies. And when the world is glued to the rapidly evolving Afghanistan situation, the question that continues to haunt Washington is what has it achieved after losing 2,500 of its troops, along with 240,000 Afghans at an additional expenditure of some $2 trillion. The other question that remains unanswered is how CIA, the world's premier intelligence agency, failed in calculating the rapid advances of the Taliban, which according to it, were not going to affect Kabul in the next six months. It was all planned, some say. But commoners don't have any choice but to believe it until the US comes out with an alternate explanation. And while the international community is yet to figure out a comprehensive framework to deal with the Taliban and the threats it brings along, a refugee crisis is emerging out of the country. Kabul airport has been shut down and with no other means of evacuation, people are fleeing to neighboring countries where they have met further disappointment. Meanwhile, the Taliban, which is desperately seeking a global legitimacy, are coming up with all forms of exercises in an apparent bid to present themselves as moderate and modern in comparison to their previous radical regime. A young female news presenter for a private news channel is in the global headlines. According to the Taliban and its supporters, the new and the so-called moderate governance model of the Taliban has freedom and equality for women. This is the narrative being spun by the militant group which is desperately seeking legitimacy from the world. The real Taliban picture is this. There are numerous other stories like this of escalated Taliban violence against women since 14th August have missed the camera lens. The women who interviewed the Taliban leader in the immediate aftermath of Kabul's fall has fled the country. And now the question crops up is if the Taliban is promising safety for women, then why are they fleeing their homeland? The truth is they are not. The Taliban are as regressive and cruel as they were in 1996. The only thing that has changed this time is that they know the art and power of propaganda and PR campaigns. And it is not just the women. The return of a brutal theocratic rule has prompted thousands of Afghans to flee their homes in search of shelter and food. The poorest border with Pakistan has witnessed thousands of them crossing over in past few days. Alta der jang o mama, corona tabash mama. Ya pilar me, pilar me Afghanistan khata de dil ta aur organ se vada vada aur organ se me mama. Kari gar suk nishta mama. Dode paise suk paida kare de shi mama. Zakh pula khor ta uza mama bade khabar ada mama. Sakho majburi der saakh ta da mama. Pilar me kide khai dode paise paida kare mama. The Taliban has promised to protect human rights and refrain from reprisals against old enemies, but Afghans are skeptical. And now their miseries are mounting as neither they are receiving any international assistance nor have they been provided any aid by the so-called well-wisher of Afghans, Pakistan. Pakistan has even denied giving refugee status to those who are seeking help from it. Now, as per the Khumras, 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 the Khumras
هغه ځای کې ډېر جنګونه و داسې طالبان و زمونږ ټول کورونه وران شو او د پاکستان غواړي چې مونږ مونږ سره مرسته کړي موږ د وجود لاسه مقصد د جنګ د لاسه مقصد د بدبختی د لاسه د کوچنیان وګوره دا د حال دی د ګرمی د وجود توجو مریض د حال نه د وروره The UN Refugee Agency has said up to half a million Afghans could flee their homeland by year's end. However, amidst this somber humanitarian tragedy, there are a few fortunate who have landed in the right country. South Korea, which does not have a liberal policy for immigrants, is amending laws to give special status to those Afghans who rendered special services to Koreans. It is not just about the safety of dozens though. There are thousands of Afghans who need to be evacuated. And this has become impossible now with all services suspended at Kabul airport. And with reprisals feared and the country collapsing at economic, social and political level, their future hangs in balance. Moving on. New Delhi has been closely monitoring the rapidly evolving Afghanistan situation as this armed militia backed by Pakistan could become a potential threat for India. While it is also engaged with the group at diplomatic level, the actions of the Taliban will reveal its real intent. The only demand from New Delhi is that Afghanistan's land should not be used to hatch terrorist plots against India and no Indian left in Afghanistan should be targeted by the Taliban. A watchful New Delhi has laid the conditions for any future engagements with the Taliban. It says it will not tolerate any anti-India activity from Afghan soil. Whether it was the India-led UN statement in Afghanistan or the maiden meet held between the Indian ambassador to Qatar and the Taliban representatives. It has also demanded that Afghan soil must not be used by any radical Islamist group to conspire against Delhi. The Afghan soil should not be used for terrorist activities of any kind, of anti-Indian activities, and we will try to focus on that element. Earlier, under India's presidency, the UN Security Council passed Resolution 2593 demanding that the territory of Afghanistan not be used to threaten any country or shelter terrorists. UNSC Resolution 2593 addresses India's key concerns pertaining to Afghanistan at this time. The resolution demands that Afghan territory not be used to threaten or attack any country, shelter or train any terrorists and plan or finance terrorist acts. It specifically mentions individuals and entities designated pursuant to UNSC Resolution 1267, that is, Lashkar e Taiba, Jeshi Muhammad. And in view of the evolving situation, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has constituted a high-level group comprising External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar, National Security Advisor Ajit Doval and senior officials. India says it is also committed to bring back each Indian individual or those belonging to persecuted minorities. Currently, of course, the Kabul airport is not operational. So I don't have any um, an update on when uh, we will be able to uh, do more flights. I think we will be able to revisit this issue once we have uh, you know, Kabul airport operational, uh, once airport operations resume there. So I think uh, we'll have to wait for that. Meanwhile, of course, our special Afghanistan cell continues to operate as in touch with whoever is, is in uh, Kabul and in Afghanistan. <laughs> Al-Qaeda, one of the most dreaded groups that killed 3,000 U.S. people in the 9-11 attacks, had its bases in Afghanistan during the previous Taliban regime. And now, on the Taliban's return, it has not only hailed its victory, 
but has vowed to target Kashmir next. And it could become a three-pronged war for India, which has already been battling a two-front diabolic attack of Pakistan and China. Not that India is any less equipped, but Afghanistan and India have had a great relationship over the past two decades and any such incident can reverse the progress made between the two sides. And now in our section of Asia this week, the stories from across the continent that hit the headlines this week. Pacifico Yokohama is one of the Japan's largest convention centers which recently hosted Japan World Stamp Exhibition. It is the anniversary of the founding of postal service in Japan. It is held every 10 years since 1971. This year marks the sixth time when Japan hosted this event titled the Philanipon 2021. And to reflect the fact that 2021 marks the 150th anniversary of postal service in Japan, the exhibition introduced many items to broadly communicate to visitors. It showcased the history and culture that has been created by postal service during its long journey as well as the future potential of the industry going forward by using newly developed delivery robots and drones. ポストのいろんなま昔からのポストや配達員の制服、あとえっと最初の頃から今までの切手をいろんなものを発行してきておりますので、まあそういったものを展示させていただいています。えっと、世界からえっと、いろんな切手珍しい切手もいろいろあの展示をさせていただいておりますThe Philanipon 2021 with the scheme celebrating 150 years of service, delivering new value tomorrow is dedicated to popularizing the postal service. The purpose of the exhibition was to spread and develop stamp collecting philately in Japan and throughout the world and to strive toward cultural exchange and international goodwill between countries and regions across the globe through postage stamps. Rice remains a staple food in Japan for over 2,000 years. The country produces nearly 8 million tons of rice every year with a consumption of 55 kg per person. Oyama Sen Maeda in Chiba Prefecture is a spectacular rice field terrace that could be easily accessed from Tokyo. And one of the greatest benefits of being a rice-loving country is that Japan also has beautiful rice field terraces called Tenada across the country. Oyama Sen Maeda was recognized in 2002 as a cultural landscape created mutually by people and nature when it was designated by Chiba Prefecture as a prefectural landmark. The cultivation of the hillside of mountainous region was a common sight throughout Japan until the late 1970s. However, due to increase in the use of machinery and an aging population of farmers, this beautiful landscape disappeared. But in Kamogawa city, Terrace rice paddy of Oyama Sen Maeda continues to be carefully maintained and cultivating to this day, which has made it a famous tourist attraction. At least eight people were wounded this week in Houthi drone strikes on Saudi Arabia's Abha airport that also damaged a civilian airplane, Saudi State TV reported. 
The Saudi-led coalition fighting the Houthi group in Yemen said earlier that it intercepted a Houthi drone that was targeting Abha International Airport. Shrapnel was scattered in the vicinity of the airport, the coalition said. Ikbaria TV said a second armed drone was intercepted, but debris wounded eight people and damaged a civilian airplane inside the airport. The Houthis did not claim responsibility for the attack, but the Iran-aligned group regularly fires drones and missiles into Saudi Arabia. South Korea's parliament past week approved a bill that bans major app store operators such as Google and Apple from forcing software developers to use their payment systems, effectively stopping them from charging commissions on in-app purchases. It is the first such curve by a major economy on the likes of Apple Inc. and Alphabet Inc.'s Google, which faced global criticism for requiring the use of proprietary payment systems that charge commissions of up to 30%. The final vote was 180 in favour out of 188 attending to pass the amendment to the Telecommunications Business Act, dubbed as the anti-Google law. Moving on to our cultural section of the show where Hindu devotees across India celebrated the birth anniversary of Lord Krishna or Janamashtami with religious fervour and enthusiasm. Devotees paid obeisance to their beloved Lord Krishna by performing various rituals in the temples and their homes. Take a look. Janmashtami is one of the most popular festivals of India. Recently, devout Hindus from across India marked a auspicious occasion of Krishna Janmashtami with religious fervor and immense enthusiasm. It is celebrated every year to mark the birth anniversary of Lord Krishna which falls in late August or early September, according to the Gregorian calendar. Lord Krishna is worshipped as the eighth incarnation of Hindu god Vishnu, and he was the son of Vasudev and Devki. According to Hindu texts, Lord Krishna was born in human form to kill Kans, his maternal uncle and the demon king of Mathura city. On this day, devotees visit temples, feast on delicacies, cosplay as gods and take out vibrant religious processions. They throng various decorated temples of Lord Krishna and offer prayers, dance, chant Jai Shri Krishna and sing devotional hymns. Believers observe fast on this day and abstain from consuming greens until the next day and perform various rituals in their homes. This year, devotees were happy because the temples were open for the general public, unlike last year due to coronavirus. The festivities climax at midnight as it is believed that Lord Krishna was born at that hour. The idol of Krishna is cleaned with milk, curd and ghee and decorated with new clothes and ornaments. Then the idol is placed on a cradle to symbolize the birth of the Lord. Krishna is revered across northern India for his miraculous and cute acts as a child. His recitation of 700 words Bhagavad Gita to his friend Arjun on a battlefield is considered as one of the most important Hindu religious texts. Krishna Janamashtami is one of the most enthralling festivals celebrated by Hindus and Lord Krishna holds an important place in the hearts of his followers. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.